Hi guys, Dan Malone here from MassLive.com along with Andrew Sear of the Massachusetts Daily Collegian. Uh, apologize for the glare, we are out uh, in the Mullen Center yeah. with these new bright uh, HD lights that uh, make the game great, not so much for the post game video. Um, but I mean, if you're UMass, you're not going to complain about anything tonight. The 89-62 win over uh, a pretty overmatched Central Arkansas team. Uh, I I don't know, personally, after the way they struggled in the opener against Howard, which is another kind of lowly team, a team they should beat, to come out and just kind of blow the doors off them in the second half here. They got up by 30 at one point. Uh, I think this is exactly what this team needed heading into Las Vegas next week. And I think it probably gives the fans uh, a pretty good feeling about this team moving forward, too. It does, and you can't ask for a better start to the season. I mean, obviously, Kellogg said in his postgame press conference, he still has a lot of things he'd like to work on with this team. But you're 3-0 and after your first three games of the season, especially three games in six days. That was a pretty quick turnaround, like Kellogg said. Um, but just looking at this game, I think this was a game that UMass was expected to win coming in. And they, I think they lived up to the expectation. They made 16 three-pointers tying a school record. Record. You know, shots were falling. Jabari Hines once again continues to prove that he's made the biggest jump from last year to this year. 24 Definitely. points again, and he really took the foot off the gas. Kellogg subbed him out. I think just under eight minutes left, and I think he could have easily, you know, proceeded that number. Um, but just an all-around good team win for the Minutemen, um, especially given the team confidence going into Las Vegas. Um, I think internally, I think they're happy with where they're at. Yep. But I think at the same time, I think both Kelg and I think a lot of the fans know that the road's only going to get harder for this team, and they still have some things to improve on, in particular that half-court defense. Yeah, let's not you know mince words here. Central Arkansas is an awful team. Uh, they won two games last year. They started 0-19 uh, before they finally ended that, that, that streak. And they were only up by 11 today, UMass was, at the half. Um, I, Derek obviously wasn't pleased with that. He probably said a little something in the half and, you know, in the locker room at halftime. Um, and it took him a couple minutes to get going again. And then finally, uh, Jabari found that, that little, that little whatever it is that's kind of pushed him yeah. over the, over the, you know, to another level this year. And then Dante, too. I think it was huge to see Dante Clark come out and shoot the way he did. Uh, he made 5 of 10 uh, from three-point land. Uh, 17 points for him. Because um, he, he said Against Harvard, that he was that he was kind of str he was struggling, he was pressing, he was forcing it. Tonight it seemed to come a little easier for him. I, Kellogg says he's not still quite there defensively, but to see him come out and shoot in concert with what Jabari did in setting you know a new career high for the third straight game, that was you know you, you can't draw it out much better than that against a team you're supposed to beat. Exactly, and I think also what's impressive about Jerry, Jabari not only his ability to score, but he had nine assists to just one turnover tonight. That's a per that's it, a great ratio. It is, and coming into the season, especially with Trey Davis, who ran the point for most of last year's mm -hmm. start at point guard, Jabari Hines has slid into that role nicely, and I think it's actually been better for him and Trey Davis. It allows Trey Davis to play off the ball. He's been getting some shots to go, but like you said with Dante, he's been struggling the first two games of the year. It, it wasn't so much that he wasn't getting the open looks because he was getting shots. It he just was. they weren't falling. And it's nice to see uh, for him uh, to get that going. And I think that moving forward, he's going to be a guy because honestly, do we think that Hines can keep up this play for the entire season? Maybe not 24 points Maybe tonight, not, but uh, he, I, I think he's certainly he's taken a step. I think we're at this point where it's kind of not, oh, is that a fluke? I think fans would be disappointed if he didn't come out and at least you know make some of the plays he has been. Like I said, I don't know if he can keep this up over the course of 30 games, but right now he's playing you know the best ball of his life. He is, and with Dante, Kellogg's in the press conference as well. He's the one guy that I want to be overly aggressive just because he's a player that can score the ball and can create shots for himself uh, when the uh, time comes. But another thing he mentioned was the play of Zach uh, Coleman and Seth Berger throughout the first three games of the season. They might not stone the sh uh, show in the stat sheet, but the two of them have kind of been fit into the role quite nicely. Coleman leads the team with 20. I was say, Coleman has stood yeah, out in the stat he, sheet. He has 24 rebounds yeah. to lead the team, and the two of them, they're not going to have the glamorous numbers like Trey Davis, like Jabari Hines, like Dante Clark, but I think those guys are critical, especially with Malik Hines and Rashawn Holloway, who are still, it showed today, they're still, they're still learning, maturing, right? they're still Still, they still need have a little bit to go before the, where they need to be, um, both physically and mentally. Yeah. Um, so the fact that at six seven Coleman is playing the center and leading the team in rebounds, and with Seth Berger, you know, not not the most stocky guy inside, but the fact that the two of them are playing where they are inside, I think that's got to be rewarding for Kellogg and definitely something that he's been happy with for the yeah. first three games. And Zach Coleman averaged 35 minutes over the first two games, only played 17 tonight, which I think is good for him considering they were they were kind of watching his minutes last year. He still had 10 points and six rebounds. I mean, yeah. what more can you ask him in this one? He hit a three. Um, those kind of complimentary, complimentary pieces, Derek said, are maybe what they have been lacking the past couple years, kind of that grit and that gut 
and kind of just the, you know, forget about the stat sheet. I'm going to go out there and just bang bodies and get rebounds. Um, but you mentioned the big guys, uh, Malik Hines and Rashawn Holloway both fouled out tonight. They didn't have a super, a super statistical impact. They didn't need to, in all honesty. Um, but this wasn't a kind of a, another step forward for them. It's still, I mean, they're what played three games in their career. It's still early yeah. for them. Um, and lastly, um, Zach Turcott, the yeah. walk-on, the walk-on junior, who you know he's there every day in practice. You know he does everything else everyone else does. He doesn't have a scholarship to show for it, but he got in tonight. He um, did. They they didn't need him because of foul trouble, although it looked like they they might early on. But he got in, and you know he scored a couple buckets. He put a nice little. Uh, move in the paint, yeah. kind of in, in slow motion compared to some of the other guys. Uh, but he spun a guy around, and you know he got in there. He got his name called. He got some cheers, and I think that kind of put the, um, you know, it was like the icing on the cake for a blowout win. It was, and it was nice to see, especially he got the crowd fired up. Anytime you can get a walk on in, yeah, uh, especially just for the teammates. You saw the. As, as excited as Turcotte was his teammates on the sideline, they were going nuts. Bergantino was jumping out of his seat. It was nice to see, but one last thing, C.J. Anderson, 12 rebounds, Trevor career rebounds, high. Yeah. Kellogg mentioned that he's the guy that he's been really impressed with. C.J. Anderson, great defender, great rebounder for a guard. I think that moving forward, his ability to rebound from that guard position is going to help this team. Especially if they have to play small. And with Turcotte, just another lastly, um, they didn't need him tonight. They might need him moving forward. They might yep. need him in Las Vegas to come in, foul some guys, play a couple minutes. It's good to get that experience now in a low-pressure situation moving forward. So all in all, a pretty good night for UMass. They move to 3-0. They'll uh, take on Clemson on Monday out in Las Vegas as part of that MGM Grand Main Event Tournament. Uh, Sear, you won't be there. I won't. Uh, but I will, so we might have to put these videos in hiatus. Uh, so thank you for now, and uh, I will uh, catch you guys later. Thank you.